Welcome to my podcast, What the Fuck Spirit. If you made it past that name, this is going to be the podcast for you. This is going to be a no holds barred, no bullshit, open and honest conversation with Maria Leggett, and that's me, about all things spiritual. It's time to begin talking in an open and honest way about what spirituality is and what it is not. We're going to discuss all things woo-woo, witchcraft, spiritual, queer spirituality, medium versus psychic, energy healing, light work, shadow work, and any other bullshit that people want you to believe because it keeps them comfortable. It is time for you to grow. Let's go. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here today. Help me enjoy this podcast today. I want everybody to click that love button. I want everybody to share it out. Help me, help me, help me get awareness about this brand new podcast that I am starting. Um, Interestingly enough, I am sitting here with sweaty palms (laughs) and I am nervous as all get out. Um, You know, a a year, two years, it's been a while. (laughs) I started um, a podcast a long time ago. Hey, Charity. Um, So I just want everybody to know that this is live. This is going to be an international podcast. So (laughs) anything that I say on here, everybody's going to be able to see and hear. So hi, Adelina. Thank you so much for being on here. I'm so appreciative of all of you supporting me and coming on to watch me. Um, So a couple of years ago, I started a podcast and I let it go. And I don't know why. Well, I do know why I did. I had some friends who say, you know, it was great. I love it. Everything was wonderful. And then out of the blue, I hit this massive imposter syndrome. Hi, Candy. So I hit this massive imposter syndrome and it was a problem because I didn't believe that I was worthy. I didn't believe that I deserved to launch a podcast like this. And, you know, this is what happens to us. This human world that we live in, we have these expectations that we have to match some kind of bullshit set of circumstances because somebody else said so, right? Um, Old guy in Ohio decides to create Victoria's Secret and every woman in the world thinks that they need to weigh 115 pounds to be beautiful. And that's a bunch of crap. I know women who weigh 300 pounds and are absolutely beautiful. Women who are 200, absolutely stunning. It doesn't matter. It comes from the inside, which is where your beauty is. So one of the things that I want this podcast to be about, which I think we've already started off on that foot, is no expectations outside of yourself are yours. Stop looking for validation from anybody else. If you decide that you want to weigh 115 pounds, more power to you. I could never be that weight. Never, never, never. I think I was probably in like, fifth grade the last time that shit happened. So it's really important that we stand in our authenticity. We stand in who we are, recognize the beauty of the people that we are on the inside, whether you're male, whether you're female, recognize the beauty of who you are. Um, And even if, you know, and I say this, whether you're male or whether you're female, whether you're non-binary, whether you are transgender, it doesn't matter. Stand authentic in how you view yourself and do not ever allow anyone else to tell you this is who you need to be because they're telling you that you need to be this so that you keep them in their comfort zone. It is not your responsibility to keep anyone else in their comfort zone. Did it ever occur to you that you incarnated on this earth in this lifetime to create discomfort in other people and by allowing them to stunk you down and put you in this container, you're not following your journey. You're not following your soul path. Be you. Be authentic to who you are. It doesn't matter what anybody says. I guess my soapbox is starting kind of early. I have this whole list here of, you know, do it in this order. So not happening. Um, And it's really important to me that we honor everyone for where they are on their journey. 
And so we will fly. I'll have to go get myself a rainbow flag. We will fly the rainbow flag for this podcast. We will support and love all those wherever they are in their journey, however they want to identify, because I can tell you that I definitely was uncomfortable with a lot of this a few years ago. But the difference between me and a lot of people was I was willing to step outside of my upbringing and just start asking questions. Can you help me to understand? Can you help me to understand? I am spicy this morning, Julian. I don't know what's happened to me. It's like the podcast turned on and boom, (laughs) there's the spicy Shelly. And so, you know, we are here, all of us, we have agreed to incarnate on this earth to push people outside their comfort zone. So if you know people who need to be pushed outside of their comfort zone, share this podcast, put it on your pages, let everybody know that it's here. Keep me in the algorithms, allow me to continue to do what I do and what I love so much. Okay, so now I'm going to get my list. I need to introduce myself. Now that you kind of know my belief system, let me introduce myself. My name is Maria Michelle Leggett, and I choose to go by Shelly. And, you know, the interesting thing is I say that I choose to go by Shelly. I watched the video on TikTok this morning. We're going to go with some more spicy stuff here. And there was a woman who was talking about, um, and she was a heterosexual white female who was having a conversation with an older white woman who was really uncomfortable with the um, chosen roles of he, she, they, them, because the woman was a public school teacher. And the teacher was talking to her and she goes, you know, you're, she said to her, you're really fortunate or not fortunate. She said, I I really feel bad for you that you have to teach in the school system right now because things can be so overwhelming. And at first the woman was thinking, oh, she's like giving me kudos. This is great. Then she realizes, because the woman says to her, I wouldn't want to have to put up with you know, the names, you know, I don't want to be called this. I want to identify as that. And then the woman gets upset and she goes, okay, well, I was born with the name Kate and I prefer to be called Katie. And she goes, oh, well, that's okay. It's just a nickname. And she goes, what's the difference? (laughs) What is the difference? I mean, let's say that I wanted to identify as male. What if I wanted to go by Mike because my middle name was Michelle? It's just a nickname. It's what I prefer. It is no fucking different, people. My name is Shelly. I prefer to be called Shelly. Spirit says, hey, we want you to go by your given name, Maria. Cool, Spirit, I got you, but I prefer Shelly. So what would be the difference if somebody says, hey, I want you to call me Mike, but my given name is Michelle because I identify as male. Love them. Love them and give them kudos for the fact that they had enough chutzpah to say, I want to be called Mike because that's not easy. It's not easy to come out and tell people, here's what I want to be. It's no different. So if you're willing to call me Shelly, then by God, you better call somebody who wants to be non-binary, whatever damn name they want to be. That's your job. Your job is to support your local human and love them no matter what they're going through. And if that means that today I want to be Shelly and tomorrow I want to be Maria, guess what? That is my God-given right because it is my body, my energy, and it's my way. So apparently now we know what energy this podcast is going to be. All right. So let me talk about myself. Um, So I have been a professional medium for about six years. Before that, I was in the printing industry and in IT, believe it or not, right? Totally left brain, all the way to the right brain. Um, But I know other people just like this, right? And it's it's the beauty of being able to use both sides of my brain and doing it very well. Um, It just got to the point where the IT world was too much for me. I didn't like it anymore. I fully enjoyed stepping into the beauty of who I am as a medium and embracing that. There are some people in my family who are uncomfortable with it, who don't like it. Um, And I hid it for a long time because I didn't want to lose family. I didn't want to lose friends. But lo and behold, I had to be me. So I have put people outside of their comfort zones. And I'm really okay with that. I really am. So. How did I, one of the things that people asked me the most was, how did you become a medium? Let me tell you something. This was not my chosen vocation. Not at all. (laughs) 
I was really good at teaching, you know, ERP systems. I was really good at writing documentation of writing tech technical manuals. I was very good at that and I enjoyed it. I found it fulfilling right until spirit said, Hey, we want you to hit a spiritual path. Thunk. <laughs> Talk about a mic drop. I was absolutely dead silent and I went kicking and screaming the whole way, but I did it. So I started out this path being a certified aromatherapist. It literally started with essential oils. And so um, after doing the certified aromatherapy, my girlfriend, Trisha convinced me that I needed to be a Reiki master. So I went and took Reiki classes and the attunement, <laughs> the attunement opened me wide up. And that was how spirit was able to get to me and say, here are all the things that we want you to do. And we want you to do them rather quickly. <laughs> so that's how I've gone from zero to where I'm at right now in this podcast in six years. Yeah. Julian says, is that how it works? Spirit never seems to call us to do what we're already comfortable and good at doing. Amen. Absolutely. Julian, I would, this was not anything I would have ever chosen to do. I always thought it was cool. I loved watching the shows. I loved reading about it, but bringing it on for me, never in my wildest dreams. So my friend Trisha continues to like pepper me with like, here's an Oracle deck. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't know about all of that. Um, and I will never forget the very first card that I ever pulled was from one of Doreen Virtue's deck. And it was Ishel, I-X, I-X-C-H-E-L. I just pronounce it Ishel. I don't know how it's really pronounced. And it was the medicine woman. And I was sitting there doing that, um, playing with essential oils when I pulled the card. And she's like, oh, look, spirit's calling you out. Look what you're doing. And, you know, I look back at that now and it's hitting me right in this moment as I'm talking about it on the podcast that I have a very specific medicine to bring to the world. And I'm being called to step into that medicine by doing what I am doing. Because medicine is not the stuff that we take, right? It's not the pharmaceutical industry. It's the energetical medicine that we're brought here for. So I have my own specific brand of medicine that I am bringing in. And I've just named it what the fuck spirit. <laughs> um, so along this way, I wound up going to Hawaii with my friend Trisha and we went to see Doreen Virtue. And I know a lot of people don't like Doreen Virtue because she's turned into this born again Christian. Um, however, I will say that Doreen was the very, very soft landing that I needed at the time in order to get where I'm at right now. So even though she has turned into something that I would never read or listen to, I am extremely grateful to her for where she was in her journey at the time, because it really gave me the um, landing board or the, the, the diving board that I needed to be able to jump off. Yeah, Julian says that doesn't invalidate the good work she did before. Absolutely correct. And that's the thing. I'm not going to I'm not going to let go of all that beautiful work that she did before just because she's in this born again Christian place. And you know what? Good for her. If that's where she's comfortable, I'm all going to support her and say, good for you. I will love you from afar. That is just not my gig. I harbor no ill will towards her, but I am so grateful for what I've been through with her and what I learned from her because it really got me here. So while we were in Hawaii, I really began recognizing the energy of Hawaii and how like it's really overwhelming and I could talk to Pele in my dreams. I mean, it was fabulous. And I come home and <laughs> I'm driving around in my truck, right? I come home and I'm on, in, my, in my truck at the time. I'm driving up 75 North here in Ohio. Boom, 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 boom. And the next thing I know, there's this little old Italian man in the truck next to me. I'm like, okay, where did you come from? And so as I'm driving along, he starts talking to me in his, you know, his accent. And he's telling me um, my three girl, he's talking to me about my girls. He talks to me about a three leaf clover. He's talking to me about St. Patrick. And I'm like, what are you, I mean, why are you talking to me about all this Irish stuff? And he gets upset with me. He goes, no. But he points back to the three leaf clover. And I said, oh, do you mean a four leaf clover? No, no, no. He got really mad at me. Um, so now I'm starting to get this massive pain up my right hand, up my right arm. I mean, massive pain. 
And it wasn't until I told this story to my friend Jenna not that long ago. And she's like, did you call 911? I'm like, you know what? Never occurred to me. So in that moment, I did not call 911, nor did I call my husband. What I did, because I thought I was dying, I called my best friend. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. That's why I'm seeing this man in my car and what he's doing. I can see his clothes, the whole spiel. And so um, I wound up calling Trisha and I'm crying because I'm really upset. And she's like, okay, we need to get you calm. We need to make sure that everything is okay. And we need to get to a point where you can actually talk. So she completely changed the subject, started talking to me about the most monotonous stuff. The pain in my arm went away. He quieted down. He was still sitting there. And so she waited until I got home. I got parked in my driveway and she says, all right, tell me everything. So I start telling her everything. I'm like, okay, here we go. And I tell her about this Italian man. I tell her what he looks like. I tell her all the things that he's saying to me, because there was way more that I don't want to put publicly, but way more information and the pain in my arm, the whole thing. The next thing I know she's crying. Now I'm a little bit miffed at this point because I'm thinking, um, you're supposed to be supporting me. What are you doing? Why are you crying? And I said that to her. Why are you crying? And she says, Shelly, that's my dad. Well, excuse me. And I said, are you kidding me? She's like, no. And I just went silent. Like I didn't know what to say. And she said to me the four words that have changed my life inexplicably. She said to me, Shelly, you're a medium. I said, no, I'm not. Gut reaction. Boom. No, I'm not. Cause I totally was not. And I said, no, I'm not. And she says, I beg to differ. That is my dad. And the interesting thing was, was that her dad had passed away a year before I met her. So I never saw a picture of him. She didn't really talk about it because it was too painful for her. She was very close to him. And she was going through some health issues with her mom anyway. So we talked about her mom a lot. So knowing now, I look back at that and I gave her so much evidence, right? From the chemo to the, um, he never referred to his daughters as my daughters. He only referred to them as my girls. And so when she said, that's all he ever said to us was my girls. He never referred to us as my daughters. She said he was sick. He had cancer and he would get chemo and he always got it in the right arm and it always burned and he hated it. And so it was this huge moment for me that I really had to stop and look and go, am I a medium? And of course I kept saying, no, 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 no. And spirit said, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So that's when I just started taking the classes and doing the things. So that is how I have gotten to this point where I am now a medium and I am in seminary with Fellowships of the Spirit in Lilydale, New York to be an ordained minister. I am already an associate ordained minister and I will have my fully ordained license in May. So I will graduate as fully ordained minister in May. And I'm super excited about that to be a spiritualist minister. So that is part, that's how I got to this point. And um, I just had to step outside of the imposter syndrome for I'm not good enough. I don't deserve who am I? Because you know what? There's only one me. There's nobody else who can do what I can do. They may do it differently, but they don't do it exactly like me. So there's only one me and there's only one you. Don't forget this. There is only one you. There will never be another so you have to do all the things that you were meant to do in this lifetime, because if not, I hate to break it to you guys, you're going to have to come back and repeat this life. Maybe not exactly like this, but you're going to have to repeat it until you get the lesson and understand it. So I've told you how it all started for me. I want to talk to you now about where you can find me. So you can find me all over social media. I am on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok, all as Maria Leggett Medium. So if you use Maria Leggett Medium, you're going to find me on any one of those social platforms. You can find me on um, Podbean, which is where this is going to release. As soon as I'm done here, I'll post this podcast to Podbean. 
And you'll find that at, at WTFspirit.com, which is right here in the frame, whatthefuckspirit.com. And you can also go to my website if you'd like to book a reading for me. And that's just marialeggett.com. You can see the spelling of my name above, M-A-R-I-A-L-E-G-G-E-T-T.com. And yes, that is my given name. So thank you so much for joining me so far. Please like, love, share this video out with all your friends. Keep me in the algorithms. Help me to get awareness out for the beauty of this podcast. I have some amazing speakers coming up. So I'm going to pull it up right now so I can start talking to you. I've already got eight scheduled speakers. So January 25th, we have Jenna Sky coming in from Sacred Soul. And Jenna's going to be talking about the healing of sisterhood circles and being in sacred space. On February 8th, we have Charity Murphy and Charity is a life coach. And she's going to be talking about heart work, journaling and anything else that we desire because Charity and I have a tendency to go completely off script and do all the things because we love just chatting together. And on February 22nd, 222, I have the most amazing woman I refer to as mama. And we have Lady Rhea Rivera, who is coming to us from Lady Rhea Inc. And literally her topic is nothing is off limits. And her business is the Enchanted Candle. She does the most amazing candles with glitter on them. Absolutely stunning. And if you go to my website and look up my intention candles, Rhea has designed all of the labels that I sell on those intention candles. Absolutely stunning. She's amazing. And then March 8th, we have Heidi Beth Abney. And she is coming in and we're going to talk about spirituality and modern heathenry. Super, super excited to start learning more about different pagan pathways. And then March 22nd, we're going to talking about um, talking to Julian Krasan Hill from Priest of Inanna. And we're going to be talking with him about queer spirituality, breaking through limitations and human design. So I cannot wait for all of this. If you want to see the other speakers and the dates that are coming up, just go to WTFspirit.com and click on schedule of episodes so that you can see everything that's coming on. And we have more speakers coming after that. There's so much that's going to happen with this. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Now, why should I subscribe to your podcast, Shelly? If you're going to do it here live on Facebook, why do I need to subscribe? Let me tell you why. Number one, once this video is done, it is done. It will not be posted to my Facebook page. Um, it'll be there for a short period of time and then it'll be gone. It's only going to be available on the podcast after a certain amount of time. So you'll need to subscribe to the podcast in order to be able to download, watch, or listen to it. The other reason for subscribing to the podcast is I'm going to have pop-up episodes on Wednesdays that are not going to be available through this page. So they're never going to pop up on my Maria Leggett Medium Facebook page. They're only going to be on the podcast. And so we're going to have lots of different things we're going to talk about that way because I have so many amazing speakers lined up. I'm going to have to do the stuff that I want to do separately as pop-up shows. So make sure that you subscribe and follow me on WTFspirit.com. Okay, um, let's talk about classes that I have coming up. I am super excited to be teaching more and more classes. Um, I have a lot of people asking me for very specific classes. I do have some digital classes if you'd like to take those. And the digital classes, if you'd like to find those, are at classroom.marialeggett.com. And that is my online digital academy. And so what we have coming up are, we have the podcast, which I'm on right now. Whoop, whoop, and this will release again in two weeks. And I will be doing readings Thursday, Friday at Thimble Gardens here in Hamilton, Ohio on Saturday, January 14th. I'm going to be doing readings at Find Me in the Woods Apothecary in Moraine. And excellent, excellent. Cannot wait until Saturday night. I am launching with Tree Malot, the rediscovering of women's circles. We have this beautiful free webinar. And I think we've only got 12 spaces left open. We opened up 30. Those sold out. I had to open up more. It's free. 
And so everybody registered. We opened up more and we're almost booked again. We're not going to do it past 50. Um, we really want to keep it in that way. So if you want to join, you've got a couple more days to join and grab a seat to join us Saturday night, January 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern to talk about what a woman's circle is, all the different uh, pieces of a women's circle, the kind of resources that you find in them, why you want to do a women's circle. And when we're done with that, we're actually going to teach you or not teach you. We're going to hold space for you and run a mini circle in about an hour. We'll get it done. And then um, we are going to talk to you about our eight week program that we're going to launch called the magic of circle. I am so excited. Cannot wait for that. And then Sunday at Thimble Gardens, I am um, doing a private party there, but I'm also teaching the Root Chakra Deep Dive, and that one is only in person. And if you are interested, I'm teaching Spirituality 101, both online and in person through my website. You can find it at marialeggett.com slash classes. And then, of course, we have Mediumship Development Circle, which is the first Saturday of every month. So that'll get us through the next couple of weeks for classes. All right. So we are 30 minutes into this. So now let's start talking about the reason why I wanted to do this podcast. We're going to start talking about spirituality. And my mouth is dry. Where's my water? Here's my water. You know, the funny thing is I don't get to edit any of this because it's all live. So all the mistakes, all the bloops, it's all going out there. Okay. What is spirituality? What does spirituality mean to you? If we have anybody who's watching, who's willing to post in the comments, please post them in the comments. I'll read them. I'll leave your name out because it will be on the podcast. But I'd like to know what you think spirituality is. So. Years ago, when I heard the word spirituality, I'm talking a long, long time ago, I used to think that religion and spirituality were used interchangeably. I thought that they um, were the exact same thing. I didn't know any better. And so now I can tell you that I know for a fact that spirituality and religion are two totally different things. And they actually coexist together in, in many people's lives. Some people still want to view religion and spirituality as the same thing, and they are not. They coexist together. So what I did was I actually went through dictionaries because I wanted to look and see what is spirituality defined as. So in the Oxford Dictionary, it is defined as the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. Merriam Webster has the definition of something that is in ecclesiastical law belongs to the church or to a cleric as such. We have a viewer who says, to me, spirituality is a physical or outward reflection of my path and growth towards spirit. Beautiful. So let's see how this matches up with the definitions. So the Cambridge Dictionary defines it as the quality that involves deep feelings and beliefs of a religious nature rather than the physical parts of life. And dictionary.com calls it the quality or fact of being spiritual, incorporeal, or immaterial in nature. So now I wanted to know what does religion mean? So the Oxford Dictionary, I use all the same four. Oxford Dictionary calls it the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods with an S or a particular system of faith or worship. I think it's interesting that Oxford has an S on gods. The Merriam Webster says the service and worship of God or the supernatural, the supernatural. So Keep that in your bonnet, right? The supernatural, it's in the dictionary. Cambridge, the belief in and worship of a god or gods. Again, we have the S or any such system of belief and worship. And then in dictionary.com, a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when considered as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies 
usually involving devotional and ritual observances and containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. And that was exactly what I was looking for. So that sealed for me what I already suspected. Spiritual, spirituality and religion are very much like the yin and the yang. They are the feminine and the masculine. Both are needed. You need the structure of religion. Well, you don't need it, but some people do. But it's the balance in life, right? So there's a structure. There are laws. There are things that we do. Spiritual laws, right? things that we observe. And there's a structure of here's how we're supposed to behave in the earth. Then we have spirituality, which is the feminine. Spirituality is that more about what I believe and it's the flow. My flow and my belief is allowed to change because these are things that we cannot physically see, things that we cannot physically touch in our 3D world. We can see them with our third eye, right? That's spirituality. If you're seeing with your third eye, that's your spirituality spirituality, because most religions, unless you're talking outside of the pagan religion, they close your third eye off. They don't want your third eye open at all. So those religions are completely closed off to what I would refer to as the supernatural, because they'll tell you that the supernatural is bad. Supernatural is not bad. It's not evil. I've had so many people tell me that what I do with mediumship, I'm doing evil. I'm doing harm to the world. I need to stop. Like I have had so many people private message me and say horrible things and post on my Facebook page. I have to block them because I've even had a man tell me that as a female, I have no right to be a minister because the Bible says that women can't do that. And to this man, I say to him, do you realize that there are 16 books missing out of the Bible, 16 books missing out of the Bible? And do you know that the Bible was originally written in Aramaic? And then Aramaic became Hebrew. If you compare them together, Hebrew and Aramaic are almost identical, but Aramaic is no longer a thing. It's not spoken so much anymore. So it's Hebrew with all these little cute little extra characters added to it. So it was translated from Aramaic into Hebrew, translated from Hebrew into God only knows what other languages. Finally, it made it into English. The Bible that we look at right now is absolutely not the same Bible that was written over 2000 years ago. It is the worst game of telephone you're ever going to play. And people base their everyday movements, their everyday religious beliefs off of something that has been over translated and changed from the very beginning of 2000 years ago. I would absolutely love to have a Christian on this podcast who has an open mind one who will not be right, one who will not belittle my belief system, but talk to me in an actual educated conversation to say, I am Christian and I believe X, Y, Z and not try to fight me on what I believe, because I think it's important that we have all the views. So I want all the views, someone who's Jewish and feels the same way. I would love to hear from these people because you know, I mean, the Jews don't even look at the New Testament. They only look at the Old Testament. So I'd like to have that balance here on the podcast. So I digressed. So in furthering my research, I found this great website. It was ideas.org.au, which is an Australian website. And what I found was really interesting because I would have never looked at spirituality this way had I not found it on that website. So here's what I found. They listed one, two, three, four, five different types of spirituality, which I thought was kind of cool. I mean, to me, I think there's probably more because spirituality is open. It's the flow. And when you try to, to me, when you try to identify it in these five different types, that's the masculine aspect. It's almost like you're putting it into a religion. But I like the fact that they have these different types of spirituality. So I'm going to read them to you. We have mystical spirituality. This is based around a desire to move beyond the material world, beyond the senses, ego, and even beyond time. This approach centers on personal relationships and a sense of unity with all things. Anybody who is in an earth-based religion, this is absolutely you. 
This is what we do. We go beyond this physical place. We go beyond into other realms and time and space to do what we need to do. It's amazing. Authoritarian spirituality. Just the word authoritarian alone gives me the heaves. Authoritarian spirituality is a particularly strong form of spirituality based around a need for definition and rules. This type of spirituality is particularly common in specific religious practices. Now, I differ in this because to me, if it's authoritarian spirituality, it's just fucking religion. I mean, come on, let's be straight honest about that. If you're putting definitions and rules around it, that's no longer spirituality. It's not flowing. That is religion. That's just my opinion. Then we have intellectual spirituality. Intellectual spirituality focuses on building knowledge and understanding of spirituality through analyzing history and spiritual theories. This approach can be found in the study of religion, also known as theology. I can get on board with that. I can understand that. I'm good. We have a viewer who says, much of organized religion is a power-driven attempt to control, regulate, and exploit people's natural spirituality, which is at once universal, boundless, formless, but also deeply personal and individual. A Men, that is absolutely true. So as I say the word amen, the spirit's having me like all over the place. I feel like I'm squirreling all day today. Squirrel. So here we go. The word amen. Now, I talked to, I had a class where I learned from Dr. Rocco Erico, who helped translate the Bible. He knows Aramaic inside and out as a language. And he also knows English as a language. And so he's translated from Aramaic directly into English, the Bible texts. And he has a great YouTube channel. I highly suggest you go look for Rocco Erico on YouTube. Amazing guy. And you'll get a different perspective on the Bible when Rocco starts talking to you. So one of the things that he taught us in this class was the word amen. Um. He explained it that amen is actually an Aramaic word. And the basic translation that I understood it, the way he explained it was the word amen means this is my solemn vow. I firmly wholeheartedly believe everything that came before where I said the word amen. So when I say amen to what this viewer says to me, that is my solemn vow, that that is part of my foundation, part of what I truly believe. So I want you to think twice before you using the a word amen, understanding it is a solemn vow. It is not something you just throw around for no reason. It is a solemn vow that you are bringing into your being and using. So think about that. Okay, let's go back into the different types of spirituality. We have service spirituality. Service spirituality is a common form of spirituality in many religious faiths. This is a this is predominantly built around serving serving others as a form of spiritual expression. Now, if you have ever been to a spiritualist church, we are absolutely service spiritual driven. During the spiritual service, spiritualist service we serve as mediums and deliver messages to the congregation because we are supposed to be of service to help all those who come in to hear the lecture, who come in to support us. So we serve them back by giving them messages. It's probably one of the few times I've ever been comfortable in a church, which is why I'm opening up my own temple called the Alchemy of Spirituality Temple. Super excited about that. And I also serve as a minister through a spiritualist church here in Cincinnati. It is called uscl.org. And I always screw this up. So let me think about the letters. It is the United Spiritualist Christ Light Church. United Spiritualists of the Christ Light Church. There it is. uscl.org. And I will be doing services there on February uh, 12th and March 12th, I believe. And so if you want to catch those online, go to uscl.org and they have a Zoom link that you can pop on and watch. So the last 
spirituality section that they have on this website, this ideas.org.au is social spirituality. It is often practiced by people who experience a spiritual feeling in the company of others. Social support is often seen as one of the important aspects of spirituality in general. So if you are watching or listening to this, please drop me a comment. Let me know how you feel about these one, two, three, four, five different sects that we've listed out as spirituality. In my mind, even though I like being able to see this, it's part of what we do as humans that we have to put things into boxes in order to understand them. The truth is spirituality is all of these things, except the authoritarian thing. I can't get on board with that. Spirituality is all of this. It's the flow. It's all the things that we're doing. It's how we choose to live our lives in a way that we can wake up tomorrow morning and be comfortable with what we're doing, knowing that we didn't harm someone else, knowing that we are loving people for exactly who they are. So I, I like putting that out there. If anybody would like to comment, let me know. Pop me an email, hello at marialeggett.com. I would love to hear from you. Of course, I'm putting it out there and I'm going to wind up getting comments from all kinds of people who have nasty things to say, but it is what it is. You got to take the good with the bad, right? To all of those who want to send me an email that are all cranky and nasty, may you have the day you deserve. One of our viewers says, completely agree. Spirituality is love with no judgment. Absolutely. And here's the thing. It doesn't mean that we're in no judgment all the time, right? Because of our upbringing, because of what has been so ingrained in us, we can recognize when a judgment comes up and then go, oh, I need to stop that. That's what we need to recognize. We need to honor and say, oh, I have been judging and I didn't realize it. That's way more important because at least you're recognizing it and you're purposely making that change to be different and move forward. That's all anybody is asking. Choose to be open to a different perspective. That's it. I'm not saying to you that I want you to believe everything that I believe because that's bullshit. I don't want everybody to believe the same stuff. That's boring. But what I do want is I'm asking you to be open-minded enough to let me have a dialogue where maybe I change my mind and listen to you, or maybe you change your mind and listen to me. We can also, at the end of the day, go, I agree to disagree, but I welcome you to your opinion and I'm going to take mine and many blessings. Deuces. See you later. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I want whatever this is off to the right. You know, you don't have to run your household like your neighbor to the right. You don't have to run your household like the neighbor to your left. You just have to run your household the way that you like it. And, you know, it's a, I don't like the statement, stay in your lane, because it indicates that we're solo, right? That we're in these silos doing our own thing. So I don't want to ever say, stay in your lane. If you catch me saying it, please let me know and go, hey, listen, Shell, you screwed up. You said stay in your lane because we're the problem is we're already too many silos. What we need to be is fluid and just say, oh, that bumped up against me. I'm not sure that I like that, but it's going to be OK. And just love somebody for where they are. And if they're coming in super hot and cranky, say to them, may you have the day you deserve. Which, by the way, if you want, I have T-shirts and mugs on my website that you can buy. MariaLeggett.com slash shop, little selfless, shameless plug, not selfless, shameless plug. Um, because literally you're going to have the day that you deserve. If you deserve all the beautiful things in life, guess what? That is a blessing. But if you're an absolute dick, that is a curse. You get to decide, not me. I just put the words out there. Your behavior determines what that line means to you. So if you're getting triggered, you might want to think about it. Just saying. Um, <clears throat> oh, Sherry, I'm so, I'm so glad we have a viewer who says this makes so much sense to me and I am so glad that it does. Um, does anybody have any questions on the things that I've talked about with spirituality so far? Being able to embrace spirituality is 
what has gotten me to be okay with leaving behind my dogmatic upbringing of the church. And it's not that I'm not mad at anybody for taking me to church. I'm not mad about any of that because, you know, our parents cared about our eternal souls. So they take us to church and have us learn things. They repeat what they learn somewhere along the way. Somebody gets to decide, I want to learn differently. And that's me. I decided I want to learn differently. I'm doing this my way now. It doesn't mean that I think that my mom's way was wrong or my dad's way was wrong. What it does mean is that I am now free to make my own choices. The minute you become 18 and move out of your parents' house, you are free to make your own choice. And to that end, if you're still at a point in your life where you're looking around and saying, oh, you did this to me and you did that to me, I'm going to ask you to stop and take a minute because here's the thing. And this is really going to trigger some people. So I want you to sit with this when I say it. Nobody can do anything to you without your permission, unless there's physical violence, a gun, a knife, those things in line. Outside of that, we're talking about you get to choose as you're older, what part of those are you going to carry with you? So I blamed my mom for a really long time for our relationship not being well. When the truth of the matter is, I was too willing to play victim the entire time for, oh, my mom did this to me. She did this to me. She did this to me. And because I was willing to stay victim, I was not open to changing our relationship. And, you know, I have learned some really hard lessons in the last year and a half. And I have now become more open to things than ever. And I am building a new relationship with my mom because I'm not willing to be a victim anymore. And I'm not willing to blame her. It's not her fault. She repeated the things that she was taught. And I repeated some of the things that she taught me. The difference was that at some point I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And now my mom is open to say, I don't want to do this anymore. So now we are learning how we can be in each other's company and accept our very basic differences where she very much believes in the Bible and the things that go with it. And I very much believe differently, but we're learning to be okay in each other's company, loving and accepting each other for exactly who and what we are. And it has really made a difference in my life and how beautiful it is to be able to have my mom back after 12 years of not talking. I can't imagine now, like I don't want to wake up tomorrow and not talk to my mom. And I also know that that's going to trigger people to say, well, you don't know, you don't know. And you're absolutely right. I don't know. I don't know what's happened between you and anybody in your family. And please know I am not making a judgment to you. I am talking to you about what I've been through with my mom. I had a very difficult upbringing with her. I believed for most of my life until about four months ago that my mother didn't love me, which is why I was so angry. It was why I was willing to stay a victim. There were things that she said out of being hurt, things that she said out of anger that I took and let it become my truth. And we have a viewer who just said, I learned too late. My mom passed two years ago. Yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about. My father passed away almost 18 months ago, and I can't have this conversation with him. I mean, I can because I'm a medium, but I can't get that physical hug back from my dad to say, I forgive you. You forgive me. We're good. I don't get that chance, but I can do that with my mom. And there are some situations where it is not safe for you to talk to that person. And I totally understand that. And I don't want anybody to say, well, she doesn't know. I'm not telling anybody you have to change your relationships. I'm not because I was that person. I was that person who said, You don't know what it's like to be around the holidays. I hate them. My family's not anything like it used to be. I have celebrated, (coughs) excuse me, more Christmases than I can tell you without my family of origin, my two brothers and my mom. There were just the four of us for years and years and years. And I have celebrated more holidays and more birthdays without them than I can even count. I have there. I don't even have enough fingers and toes for that. So it's more than 20 years that we've not spent together. 
And I would never judge anybody for that because I've done it. My choice is personal to me and I want you to make your choice personal to you. And the beauty of spirituality is that you learn to not judge someone for that. Because until you walk in someone else's shoes, you don't know what they've been through. There are some people who it would be too difficult, too painful to go and try to have a relationship with that person, especially if they're not open to change. Both people have to be willing to change. And if you're not both willing to change, it's never going to happen. I am very open about the fact that I was molested as a little girl for three years from age eight to 10 by someone I was biologically related to. And that person still walks this earth. They are still alive. And I have had to step into a deep amount of forgiveness so that I wasn't angry at them. And I'm not angry at them. And I can honestly say that I love them as a human being because I need to love all human beings. I would not break bread with this man at my table ever. <laughs> I would not have an ongoing relationship with this man ever because it would not be in my mental health best interest to sit at a table with him and have a conversation. I don't want it. So there are always cases where there are things that we don't do. So don't judge people. We never know what they're going through. If somebody's in a bad mood at the supermarket, there's probably a reason why they're in a bad mood. Let them have it. Let them have it. Send them grace. Send them love in that moment. It doesn't mean that you have to look at that person and go, I want you to know I love you because you're probably kind of triggered and want to go, fuck off. I don't want to have anything to do with you right now. Instead of that, what I'm going to ask you to do is take a deep breath, close your eyes and say, spirit, this person has really pissed me off. And in this moment, I'm just going to ask for you to send love to them. And if they're willing to accept it, that's great. And if not, send it to the next person. Be done. That's it. Spirit sees that you're now starting to change the way that you're perceiving your interactions with people on this earth. Because the saying, and this is a massive trigger for me, not my circus, not my monkeys. I don't like that saying. Why? Why do I not like that saying? This is your circus. We're all your monkeys because we are all connected. Everything on this planet vibrates with energy. Everything. My table, my laptop, certainly I do, my pen, water, trees, grass. Everything has a vibration. Everything has an energy. We're touching it. So what I'm touching here on this side of the planet is still vibrationally connected to something over in China. This is your circus. These are your monkeys. And we need to start treating our monkeys better than what we're treating them now. That is the whole purpose to me launching this podcast. We need to do better at being human beings. We need to do better at not making fun of people. We need to do better at showing up and saying, how may I be of service to you? Even if you're not ready to say, how may I be of service or what can I do? Just sit in your mind and quietly close it and say, let me send healing out to the world. You know, this is something that I do in my um, Alchemy of Spirituality Facebook group now. I have a world healing meditation that I do once a month so that we can go out collectively and then I post it onto YouTube. So that we can go out collectively, send that energy out to the entire world for everybody who's willing to accept it. And anybody who's not, let it go elsewhere. But at least we're trying. We are trying to make a difference on this earth. You came here and incarnated on this earth for a reason. You have a purpose. Find it. Step into it. This is not the time to step away from everything that you were meant to be. I launched this podcast on January 11th at 12 p.m. for a reason. 111, total angel numbers. The number 12. My life path is a three, but it's a number 12 that goes down to a three. 12 is a massive sacred geometry number. The 12 zodiac time tribe. Oh, shit. I got them all confused now. I'm all up in here. The 12 zodiac signs, the 12 Hebrew tribes, all the different ways that 12 shows up in the Bible, shows up in life. And if you work with numerology, 12 goes down to three. Three is a sacred number. Three is a massively sacred number. 
my birthday is when I look at numerology, I'm amazed at my birthday. My birthday is three, 11, six, nine. Massive sacred geometry right there. Three, six, nine. And I'm born on the 11th day at 12.01 PM. So now anybody who wants to do my astrological chart, have at it. Cause now you got it. And you understand why I have to do this podcast. It makes me uncomfortable to put my shit out there in front of everybody, but I'm being called to be a leader and you're being called to something. Aren't you ready to step into your passion? Aren't you ready to step into being who you are meant to be? And if, if, if any way, one little minute way that I can help you to get there, then I'm doing mine. I am so extremely grateful for each and every one of you who have joined me on this podcast today. Thank you so much for sharing it out. Thank you so much for liking and loving it and giving me comments and helping me and supporting me. Please go to WTFspirit.com and sign up to be subscribed. And if you'd like a reading with me, because I am a medium, you can go to MariaLeggett.com slash readings. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Many, many, many blessings.